In this next video on our sequence on data structures, we take a look at one of the most popular and most widely used data structures available, trees, and more importantly, a version of trees known as binary trees. Not all data structures can be stored or sorted into neat sequential lists. A lot of data is hierarchical in nature. Take a look at this example, which shows part of the line management structure of a school. The node at the very top of the tree is known as the root node. The nodes next down the structure are called children. The lines that join nodes together are known as branches. These terms are recursive down through the entire structure of the tree. For example, the root node head teacher is the parent node of children, non-teaching staff and teaching staff, whereas the root node non teaching staff is the parent node of children HR, finance and facilities. Once we get to the very bottom of the tree, the nodes without any further subtrees are known as leaf nodes or terminal nodes. One specific kind of tree which is particularly important and powerful in computing is the binary search tree. A binary search tree like a linked list is a dynamic data structure. It can grow and shrink as needed during program execution. It allows for efficient sorting, searching and retrieval of data. As has already been seen, a binary tree, like a normal tree, can reflect structural relationships in data such as hierarchies. A binary tree is very similar to the normal tree we just looked at, with one noticeable difference. Each node can have either no branches, one branch left or right, or two branches left and right, hence the name binary tree. Let's take a quick look at how to construct a binary tree. The data we're going to add to this binary tree is the text string Jack Spratt could eat no fat, one word at a time, starting with Jack. So Jack is the first item we come across. So Jack becomes our root node. Next up is Sprat. We compare Sprat alphabetically with Jack and discover it's greater than Jack. So we place Sprat to the right of Jack. Next up is Could. We compare Could with Jack and discover it's alphabetically less than Jack. So we place Could to the left of Jack. Next up is Eat. We compare Eat with Jack and discover it's alphabetically less than Jack, so we travel left, where we find could. We now compare eat with could, and discover it's alphabetically greater than could, and so it gets placed to the right. No is next, which is greater than Jack, so we go right, compare with Sprat, find it's less than Sprat, and so go left. And finally, we have fat which is less than Jack, so we go left, is greater than could, so we go right, is greater than eat, so we go right again. And so we've constructed our binary tree. We can represent this binary tree structure in an array, which has three bits of information. It has a left pointer value, the value of the item being held, and a right node pointer value. So we can see here Jack is in index position 1 in our array. If we look at the left pointer it takes us to the array index 3. If we jump down to 3 following the left pointer we find could as we do here. Jack's right pointer is 2. If we go to index position 2 we find Sprat. Pointers with zero in, or, or null, represent an empty pointer. In other words, this lets our code know we could store something here. Again, under exam conditions, you should be able to recreate this diagram from this array. Likewise, you might be presented with the array and be expected to draw out the binary tree. 